Is that a bird? Wait, no, no, it's a plane. Wait, no, it's a, it's, oh, oh, no. So say you're going about your everyday morning routine. You know, waking up, staring at the wall while having an existential crisis, taking a piss, brushing your teeth. But on your way to work, you hear this. Well, unfortunately for you, that means someone is really mad at your country and you got caught in the crossfire. And in 10 minutes or so, you're about to get nuked. Okay, so that sucks, but what can you actually do? Well, there's actually multiple different answers to that question, depending on how close you are to where the nuke is dropping. For this hypothetical, let's say we're dropping an 800 kiloton bomb. And I'll drop the bomb in San Francisco. Because have you guys seen any news from this city recently? Those guys could really use a clean slate at this point. Anyway, this is a map that estimates what San Francisco would look like after the nuke. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at this red circle here. This is ground zero for the bomb drop. And pretty much everything here gets immediately vaporized. So if you're here, I'm not gonna lie, you're, you're screwed. Best case scenario, you could try to drive or run out of this circle, but everyone else is gonna have the same idea. And you only have 10 minutes, oh yeah. I don't know, man. Realistically, your best course of action at this point is to call your family and tell them you love them. And then depending on how religious you are, either go pray to God or try every drug you come across for the next 10 minutes. Which, if you're in San Francisco, shouldn't be too hard to find. In fact, you'll probably dive an overdose before the bomb even gets to you. Anyway, you pretty much have no hope if you're here. But what about the people living slightly outside of that circle here? Well, it's not really looking amazing for them either. So first of all, if you're outside on the sidewalk or in a park when this bomb hits, it's over for you. Cause you're looking at instant third degree burns. And if you're wearing clothes while you're outside, which hopefully you're wearing clothes while you're outside, your clothes will literally be set on fire. But if you are able to find shelter though, um, you're, you're still screwed, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so for one, while you don't have to worry about third degree burns or your clothes being lit on fire, what you do have to worry about is massive chunks of buildings being hurled at you. Also, depending on how structurally sound the building you're hiding behind is, you might also be screwed. So, you know, don't try to find shelter from a nuke in a teepee hut. Try to find a building made out of bricks or concrete. Anyway, if you are in this area, realistically, your best course of action is once again, try to find a way out of there, hide inside a building, or spend your last 10 minutes on Earth in Yodi land. But say you don't live in the heart of San Francisco and are actually one and a quarter miles away from the explosion. What can you do now to save yourself from a nuclear bomb? Well, actually, a lot of things. Okay, so for one, don't look at the bomb while it's dropping because while it may look cool in the movies, in reality, all you'll see is black, like forever or white. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, I don't know what blind people see when they're blind. Okay, apparently they don't see nothing. Like blind people don't just see black or white. They literally see nothing. I don't know what that means, but I guess you'll find out if you stare at the nuke because it'll be so bright, it'll instantly blind you. Also, when you're out this far away from the nuke, while you're not at risk of your clothes being instantly set on fire, you will be at risk of some pretty bad burns. So your best case scenario is still hide in a building and try to find a building that has as little windows as possible. And even better, try to find a building with a basement in to hide. Finally, when the bomb hits, lay on the floor, use your hands to cover your neck because... Okay, I actually have no clue how this is going to help you, but this is what they said helps, so do it, I guess. And there you go, you've survived the initial blast. <laughs> now what? Well, honestly, your likelihood for survival is already way up because just being lucky enough to be far away from ground zero and hiding behind shelter is probably the most important thing to do for surviving. That being said, do not go outside for anything for at least 48 hours after the nuke drops because that's when fallout is the absolute worst and you're likely to come back from an afternoon stroll looking like you and Mary Jane from 60 seconds. Also, while trying to stay under the basement for the week, have canned food and water prepared because after a nuclear bomb, who knows if you can trust the tap water. Unless you're from Flint, Michigan and you already got immunity to drinking shit water. In which case, you know, keep drinking. No harm, no foul, right? So there you have it. A foolproof guide of surviving a nuke. As long as you know, you're not in the wrong area or outside or actually anywhere but behind a cement building and are able to survive whatever radioactivity you come into contact with. Or, okay, you might still die after using this guide. <laughs> I don't know, you might even be worse off after this guide. It's not like this is a tried and tested guide. I didn't go through a nuke for this. So in conclusion, nukes are bad. Fighting wars with nukes are terrible. And instead we should just do trench warfare. I'm sure that's way better anyway. But that's the end of the video. Like and subscribe. If you have any ideas, comment them below. And that's about it, man, goodbye.